Thank you very much, everyone who's joined us tonight. This is our third week now in the Liberating Cinema Film Series for 2021. Uh, and I'm really delighted to have Landra Morella here with us um, from Buenos Aires, um, from the Film Museum there. I'll let him introduce himself. Um, but basically today we're gonna to be looking at the Argentinian short film movement, 90, 1943 to 1963. And there are some really, like, I, I love that you did this, Landra. There are some really interesting filmmakers here, um, both from experimental cinema, documentary, particularly poetic documentary, uh, but also uh, um, animation and different kinds of films that really drop on different media as well. So I hope I hope you enjoy um, what Andrew will share with us tonight, and then we'll have a Q&A afterwards. We'll have plenty of time for um, discussion. I hope you had a chance to watch the films. We had 12 films, and I, again, have to thank your museum for helping us and you for sharing these films with us. Um, and some of these date from the 30s all the way into the 60s. So I'll let Alejandro take it from here. Thank you again for joining us and I hope you enjoyed tonight. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm Leandro Varela from the, I work at the Film Museum in Buenos Aires, Paulo, uh, Museo de Cine Pablo Crojican. I work as an archivist at the, at the film archive of the museum. And uh, well, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Gracias, Paulo, Sebas, uh, everyone for being here. <laughs> and so, uh, well, I was invited by uh, Mina to make a, a selection of uh, short films uh, from Argentina and focusing on the short film movement and uh, of the 60s, the 50s and 60s. And I made a selection, which you can find in the, in the website. And I also wrote an article, which is more focused on the predecessors of the, 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 of the movement. Uh, a few films from the uh, 30s and 40s, which, which were uh, sort of pioneers in a way that they began to explore the possibilities of the short film as, as an expressive medium, no? not, not just as a way to, to make uh, institutional films or, uh, or commercials. So anyways, the, there was a short film exhibition which was organized by Instituto di Tela in, in 1964 from the 15th of December to the 19th of December called Cine Corto Argentino 1958-1964. And this sort of a high point of the history of uh, the short film movement, uh, which was curated by uh, Jorge Miel Cocelo, a critic and film historian, Roland, a critic uh, cine clubist and uh, head of uh, at the time of uh, Fundación Cinemateca Argentina as well as the uh, Cine Clubs Gente de Cine and Leopoldo Torre Nilsson, the, the famous film director. And the focus of this exhibition was the short films produced in this period. The, in the catalogs introduction, the head of the audiovisual center at Instituto Itela called this phenomenon the short film generation, la generación cortometrajista. And this was a period of vast creative short film production. It is estimated that between 1957 and uh, 1963, uh, a total of 250 short films were made. And so the question is, where did this, this huge output come from? Well, in the 1950s, the national film industry in Argentina came to a, a very, uh, a point of very low production. It, it became like stagnant. This was due to various reasons, which we won't cover right now, but it came to the point that by 1957, only 15 feature length uh, films were produced. And 
we're talking about a, 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 an industry which was very important, which was very productive and, um, and uh, prolific from the period between, uh, from the beginning of the sound, uh, of the sound era up to the mid forties, we have what we call the golden years of uh, national uh, cinema. So anyway, we reached a point where the production levels were very low, consumption of local films were so, so low, and it was very difficult for aspiring filmmakers to, to begin working in this industry. So at the same time, uh, new alternatives were, uh, were created. The cine club phenomenon became very important in these years. Many cine clubs uh, uh, were were founded in these years, and they and they exhibited films and provided various training initiatives, such as workshops and short film contests. The the filmmakers of the short film generation would often attend screenings and activities and would even have their films produced by cine clubs. Some of the same main cine clubs at the time were Cine Club Argentino, Cine Club Nucleo and Gente de Cine. And what's also interesting is that cine clubs would also exhibit a interest, uh, a short films which already were exploring the aesthetic possibilities of the short film. Uh, many of these were uh, insti actually institutional films, which, within the confines of, of this uh, of this genre, made an attempt at exploring the the possibilities of this medium. This is the case of the three films which are are in the program, or which are, I speak about in the in the article, which are uh, Tigre, Playa Grande and uh, Los Pueblos Dormidos. Because before this, uh, before the short film movement arrived, um, short films were usually associated either to uh, early uh, silent films, uh, commercials, uh, institutional films and scientific films. There are a few examples of independent experimental films, but before the 40s, uh, before the mid 50s, but these are very few and in between. A few examples are the, the experimental films by uh, photographer uh, Horacio Coppola and uh, a short film by Leopoldo Torre Nilsson, which he made in 1947, titled El Muerto. All these films will be shown in the cine clubs in these years. Besides the cine clubs, uh, new education facilities came up, which would provide training opportunities for filmmakers. Independent film workshops, tertiary education programs and film departments within universities came up and started to come up in the mid fifties. Simon Feldman and Mabil Skovic both studied at the Paris Institute of Film Studies, the EDEC, and they were found in Argentina after returning the independent workshop Seminario de Cine, Seminario de Cine Buenos Aires. Uh, this workshop produced various uh, short films and even a feature film, El Negocion, shot in 60 millimeter, uh, produced in 1956. Fernando Birri, also after studying abroad in Rome at the Instituto, uh, at the Centro Experimentale, he would return to his hometown in Santa Fe and he would find the influential Instituto de Cinematografía at the Universidad Nacional del Litoral. He founded it in 1956 and directed it until 1963. This institution offered 
uh, practical a uh, practical experimental workshop, which was mainly geared toward documentary filmmaking. Tire Die, one of the most important films of the short film generation, was produced 1958 in this institution. Many of the short film generation filmmakers will would later go on to make feature length films, and many of them would be uh, closely associated to the 60s generation, also known as La Nueva Ola, a group of filmmakers who, after the short film experience, will make films with not really the same, but comparable th themes, films with comparable themes, uh, st stylistic elements and aesthetic elements. Fernando Virri, on the other hand, will become one of the forerunners of the new Latin American new Latin American cinema film movement. And he would continue uh, after 1963, he would leave Argentina in, in exile and move to Brazil where he would work for a, a period in Italy and then throughout Central America where he would continue making films and teach. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was one of the founders of a film school in Cuba in the 60s. By the early 1960s, the short film production became an institutionalized phenomenon. It was by this time that a short filmmakers association was founded in 1955. It became contemplated as a valid form of film production by the na new national cinema law, which was uh, sanctioned in 1957. The National Institute of Cinema will hand out awards to the best short films of the year, starting from 1958. And the National Endowment of the Arts, the Fondo Nacional de las Artes, will begin financing short films starting from 1962. Uh, the Fondo Nacional de las Artes was very important in, in helping to, uh, to support the production of short films and filmmakers that would want to make a living making short films, but they would produce films which were of a documentary film nature and which would cover uh, subjects related to Argentine culture. Documentaries on folkloric music, uh, local artists, traditional stories, and so on. Short film production, however, waned throughout the 1960s and by the end of the, of the decade, the panorama was quite different the social political situation changed after the 1966 military coup by the, the self-proclaimed Argentine revolution and it paved the way for different forms of exploring the short film form and its possibilities. It is in this period that new influential movements which would explore this format and its possibilities, also its possibilities of poli political action were born and some such movements include the Grupo de la Base and Grupo Cine Liberación. And some important names of these movements include Octavio Getino, Fernando Pino Solanas, and Raimundo Glazer. So that's a, a bit of a summary of the period. The films I chose for, to, I selected for this, uh, for this uh, event. Uh, were, were, were done to show the variety of films which were done in this period. I wanted to show a bit different forms of film, different genres. We have, we have uh, experimental films uh, such as Dimension, which have uh, camera-less films, such as uh, the one done by Victor Iturral de Rua. Uh, also, the Two of the most important films of this, uh, most successful at least of this uh, movement, which are Buenos Aires by Cohn and uh, 
uh, Tire 10 by Fernando Birri. And though I, I didn't include any films by the Fondo Nacional de, la, de las Artes, I included the film Spilimbergo, which sort of shows a bit the nature of the films that would eventually be produced by uh, Fondo Nacional de las Artes, uh, which is a documentary of a local artist. And uh, So yes, this is, and I also wanted to include films by directors, which are, are filmmakers, which are known, uh, well known nowadays, such as, you know, include various films by Fernando Virri. And finally, the article, well, I stated in the beginning, but the article focuses more on the predecessors to, to these films. And, uh, I provide a, an overview of, uh, you know, experimental and creative, so to speak, uh, short film production before the uh, short film generation. And I focus specifically on uh, three films, uh, Tigre, Playa Grande and Los Pueblos Dormidos. These are films which are uh, preserved at the, uh, where I work, at the Museo de Cine and uh, have recently come to light, uh, have been digitized and shown in various uh, various events, uh, various screenings online, such as Laura del Museo. And uh, in the case of Los Pueblos Dormidos, the sleeping villages, this was recently digitized and restored in 2016 and was also screened in various places in also in the place where it was uh, screened in the northwest of Argentina and so I wanted to focus on these films in this uh, article so that's uh, my presentation I don't know if anybody has any questions well, Andrew I hope I can interrupt. Thank you very much. This is a joy to hear. Thank I you. wanted to ask, ask you just bef before we kick off with everybody else with questions. Um, I just had a question just about the, basically, what are some of the, the quality of these films you mentioned? Uh, you talked a little bit about the films themselves, but in terms of the films, like if we just talk about the films, what's interesting about them to you? you know, why are they so innovative? Why are they different you know, from other film movements in the context of film history for you in Argentina, in Argentine cinema? Um, so it, it just just the kind of question, what's so special about these films? Thank you. Uh, that's a good question. Well, I'm not sure if uh, I could talk about any specific film, but what I find interesting is, as I mentioned before, the big, the quite wide variety of, of different films, which, which seem to have come out of nowhere in a way. <laughs> Because we had from like before this period, the closest thing we had to to such a you know, varied uh, use of a short film, we had a f really just a few experiments and the uh, institutional films which dared to go beyond the scope of uh, in informative uh, of being simply a, a tool for providing information to this such a wide variety of of topics themes uh, you know techniques used um, uh, well i don't know i like for example the films by uh, victor itural de rua which well he uses techniques which are well in a way inspired by the te techniques which were used by uh, Norman McLaren, applied in a local setting. And uh, well, it's a camera less filmmaking, uh, you know, uh, which he draws directly on film. I think maybe a particular, uh, maybe something that's quite distinct in, in these films when we compare to the rest of the panorama uh, of, of the films being produced at the time were possibly the two 
most important films, which I mentioned before, Buenos Aires and Tire Die. I think especially Tire Die because it's uh, it was a, a documentary film, uh, a social documentary film, which be reproduced with uh, certain uh, th th with a theory. He, I mean, he developed a theory which he wanted to apply uh, by making this film, which is using a film to provide a social change. So, so in a way, it anticipates what, what will happen after in in the films of political action of the 19th, of the late 1960s. I, I think that's possibly an element which is uh, interesting and which might distinguish uh, the films from, from the movement from other experiences taking place at the time. Thank you very much, Sandra. That answers it. I think uh, for me, what's fascinating is that now you said, you know, that dimension to initiate social change. Um, that's one thing. Now, I kind of what I find interesting is, you know, that kind of culture of serious, you know, critique, almost existential critique that, you know, you have in Argentina. Um, this is something that beautifully comes out in the films. I mean, this is something I also love. And this kind of connects to what we we're doing last week with Yugoslav cinema. Um, okay. uh, in, in Yugoslavia, you have a lot of also films that emerge, especially during the 60s, you know, um, that are extremely, you know, critical films and they're about, you know, social reality, uh, but they don't have any of the, you know, kind of um, the kind of bleak or bland qualities They really go deep and mm -hmm. particularly, you know, existentially um, and with issues of spiritual life as well related to social life. So that's why I don't know this. This for me is especially an interesting subject, but. I love, yeah, I love the range. So, and I think it is really okay. special because you you have, you know, you have so many, well, you have, there's a few films here about Buenos Aires, <laughs> right? Yes. And then there's also, um, I, I enjoyed also, this connects to what you were saying, Los Pueblos Dormidos, if I'm saying it right. Mm. Um, and then films like Dimension and Pet Petrolita, I like that you included such a range. And then you have uh, Spielenberg, I, said, I think you said, um, yes. films that you draw upon, you know, visual art, uh, painting, um, sculpture, uh, poetry, and all these different forms, um, literature and so on, and it, it's just fascinating. And I don't think you really have this, you know, this is why I think when we particularly look at, you know, film history, this is a rare thing. You do have, I mean, when it comes to avant-garde movements, Polish film is especially wonderful. I hope in the future you will get a chance to do something either together, you know, in, in, in a kind of um, joint process of looking at Polish cinema, because there's a great kind of avant-garde tradition there um, when it comes to animation film. Um, yes. But but here there's you know a really like uh, astounding almost <laughs> really an astounding range of films that are being made and the fact that they came out of nowhere this is why it's really beautiful eh? I mean this is why I guess also in a nice way it ties into liberating cinema because it's film that comes oh, God. perfect um perfect, yeah. from inside and from the heart so thank you I mean I, I I know about the Polish um, animation films but were they also uh, like live action f short films which were of a no this is thing. precisely what i'm saying so there are some there are some yes no there is there are short films also uh, that are live action but okay. the kind of films from the 50s 40s and 50s they're primarily animation so that's okay. why i said like it's mostly experimental animation and even when there is live action it's usually integrated into animation and so they have a very interesting dynamic where how they use live action in the context of animation and also how they use it to explore the unconscious and so this is I mean, in Poland, also in Czech Czechoslovakia, but yeah, so I think I, I think it ties well, but no, that's precisely what makes this unique, I think, is that there's such a range and so many different um, also kind of media being drawn upon um, to really explore the pen, really the potential film and you know, to initiate really new, new creative expression. So I'm really grateful you talked about that. Um, I, I wonder now, I'll leave, I have some more questions, but I'll, I'd like to give other people a chance. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Feel free to send me them. Uh, or I'll just let you, uh, you can unmute yourselves and feel free to ask, Landra. Well, we have here uh, people who are very knowledgeable in, in uh, Argentina short film, Pablo and Sebas. I don't know. Yes, please introduce yourself. I don't, like I think Pablo, I think Landra briefly, Pablo Marin, you're an experimental filmmaker. I'm honored to have you. Um, Abel and Sebastian, are you uh, also here? Are you a professor? I wonder, I'm, I haven't met you before, but I would like to please introduce yourself. 
Hello, I, I work, I'm co-working with Leandro in the Museo del Cine. And oh. It's uh, really great to, to see the, the, the investigation that he's coming with about the material that we have in our archive. So it's great to, to hear this talk. Thank, Thank you. you. And so, so you work at the museum as well? Uh, yes. It's very nice to meet you. Well, I'm glad this is why. Nice to so meet you too. It's, it's, this is why also, also, you know, facilitating this dialogue, you know, between archive and wider, you know, public and um, also international, you know, between different and academia and film, but also most importantly, wider public getting these films out there. Because I really love mm -hmm. learning about this. I remember when Landro told me years ago, you know, about this short film movement. And I thought, you know, why haven't, <laughs> why, why don't we know more about that? So I'm glad, yes, thank you. <laughs> Pablo, would you like to say, introduce yourself as well, please? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thank. Uh, first of all, thank you for for this wonderful opportunity to 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 hear you, Leandro, and to uh, know about uh, Liberation Cinema, which is I was I was brought into the website, and it's really an amazing project. So, congratulations on this. And yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a filmmaker, but also I was very curious to hear the presentation because I, I'm also like finishing a book on artists and experimental film and this topic is, is a, a really interesting topic about especially the 40s and the 50s which which are like this sort of very desertic uh, period of time in terms of experimental so it, it, it's always good to share uh, and to shed more, more light on this like lost decade in a way and I, I did have a, I do have a question for, for Leandro because uh, seeing the, the, um, the selection of films and, and the topic being uh, a modern short film, I, I was curious about your uh, thoughts on fiction short film because to me also it's, it's, it's not the, the, the strongest examples of, of short films during the 40s and the and the and the 50s uh, when i'm i'm thinking of on like new approaches to cinema fiction always tend to come like in in second or in third place mm -hmm. in regards to documentary mm -hmm. and also to experimental and I, I was curious about your your thoughts on on if fiction fits in this category at all or if, if it's not well, I mean, when I chose, it was a bit difficult, but I chose uh, the word modern, uh, as to say modern short film, as a way to distinguish it from uh, all the, what was used as a short film before the short film generation. So that includes everything that's, uh, you know, like uh, institutional films, scientific films, educational films, uh, very early, uh, you know, silent films. Um, so I, I try to find a way to distinguish, you know, the, that phenomenon of a short film production from what happened in the, what was, you know, shown, shed, shed to, you know, presented to the world in the uh, short film generation. But this definitely, I mean, this ca category, so to speak, also includes, uh, yeah, definitely fiction films. But but since it was focused on short fiction films, uh, I mean, short, uh, you know, creative short films, it also includes fiction short films, but not really uh, feature length short, uh, <laughs> fiction films. But yeah, it's definitely something that is uh, contemplated it was contemplated when i made the selection but i think i decided to focus more on experimental works and documentary works there is one film uh, contra campo which is part in part experimental but in part uh, a fiction film at least it, it makes use of uh, fiction film uh, the technique so to speak um but it's true that uh, before the short film movement, uh, I mean the the few sh short film, short fiction films were very few and in between. 
I mean, I don't know. Uh, the main one I've, I've heard about is uh, Leopoldo Torre Nilsson's film, uh, El Muerto. But I didn't, uh, I didn't get a chance to see it. Uh, I actually don't know how to see it, you know. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, that's a bit uh, what I think about. The, the... Okay, well, th thank you very much. And and yeah, it, it's 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 curious because I think as as people that are as as we are interested in 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 the history of of Argentine film and maybe Polish film in a in a way is 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 sort of similar, but we are used to reading about so many films that are not available anymore. So it's always good to, to confront like that sort of uh, fictional history of film with the real films that are like available to us now. And, and it's always good, I think, to, to, to return to the past and to see when, when we find or, or when the museum finds these like precious films from, 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 from the total oblivion, it's, it's really nice to open history again and, and try to, in a way, confront it with the books that we have been reading for so many decades. And, and this is always really encouraging to, to, in a way, also to, to confront the history in terms of is, is the history right? Or nowadays we have more tools to see or to fit these films into different categories that maybe 50 or 60 years ago they, they weren't as as good as or as precise as today. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. It's interesting you mentioned this because uh, I read uh, descriptions of Plaza Grande which are like very short but also a bit misleading because uh, for example I read that Plaza Grande talks about the difference between uh, like uh, the beach, it's a beach, Plaza Grande is basically a beach in Mar del Plata. And uh, so some description said that it's a, a comparison of Plaza Grande today and many years ago. And if you watch the film, I don't know, you don't, you don't really see that. No? So it's a bit, so yeah, it's definitely good to be able to, to, you know, finally access the films which were, you know, talked about. Maybe there were, very few occasions to watch these films also back in the day, so. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and thank you very much for that question. Landra, I wanted to just add, and actually to what Pablo was saying as well, uh, I think uh, when it comes to, the reason I mentioned Polish film is because I think what, you, what you're what you doing here and this kind of program is really unique. And you know, this moment in film history is unique. That's why I'm glad, particularly when you talk about access, that you're, you know, you know, you're able to share it and bring it out. Um, because it really deserves, you know, to be in kind of well-known in film history, as you mentioned, you know, in the, in the writing. Um, Polish film, again, this context is also, this is another, like, this is the only really point of comparison I only had. But even this movement, uh, or this wave, if you want, of experimental animation that came in Poland, um, that, and that kind of consistently was there, to be honest. It's not just one moment, just Poland generally has a particularly strong, you know, animation tradition. Um, and I think that's, it, it's really the only point of comparison I had, but even that kind of point of comparison is not so, I don't want to say necessarily neglected, but it's not also either that well known in film history, you know, so it's only filmmakers like um, Barbczyk, uh, Valerian Barbczyk that are now being, you know, rediscovered through restoration, through curation and so on, but there are still significant, you know, filmmakers like, my, one of my favorites is really, there's this one called Mieczysław Waskowski from the 50s, and his kind of avant-garde work is wonderful, um, and well, experimental work. Um, so, and it really ties nicely to this. So that's why there's a kind of nice dialogue going on. Um, and when it comes like, I'd, Pablo, I think and, uh, colleagues weren't, weren't here last week, but the, when it comes to Yugoslav cinema, there's also kind of um, grassroots filmmaking that was done. And we spoke about that last week, um, both from the twenties onward. And even before, you know, in the tens, there was a rich tradition that built on Serbian cinema heritage and so on of this kind of grassroots filmmaking that was happening. And even a lot of the documents we have preserved of the Balkan Wars, the First World War, they're all done by, you know, cameramen that were sent out by there by film producers, directors um, who, who, you know, established the films and made the films themselves. So, and there's a very, and that kind of dates back to the really the beginning of film. So the, that, that's why it's really interesting to see how these dynamics work, especially in a kind of context when we're used to speaking about film um, in an institutional way. 
which is not always correct, is it? Because even if, when these filmmakers, once, you know, they do receive institutional support, which they should, there is this creative aspect that should not be neglected. So, um, but I wonder, yeah, thank you very much for these questions. Does anybody else have questions? I wonder, Sebastian, you work with Landra, so I wondered if you want to share something with us from your, you know, knowledge of the archive. We're not in Buenos Aires. I'd love to come, but I, <laughs> this is really, you know, like you, you have all the, the, all the information, all the knowledge that none of us have. So if there's anything you want to share or ask, Landra, that would be, it would be wonderful to hear from you. First of all, as, as the Pablo also was saying, that when when you confront the, the text, the history writing about cinema, but you uh, see that uh, you see it from the perspective of the archive, you have um, like a broader uh, perspective. You know? The history also usually is writing from the point of view of the. Uh, Fictionary, uh, long, how do you say in English? Uh, largometraje, um, feature film. Yeah? So um, in the archives, generally, you, you found uh, some uh, all, all, all kind of production in the kind of silent cinema in Argentina. Uh, it's, it's very interesting because uh, you can see that. Uh, the, the, the history of silent cinema is written from the point of view of, of selective uh, feature film, fictional, and you start to research and you find that uh, fundamentally the production was uh, about all sorts of uh, formats, of sort of genre, uh, besides uh, fiction, uh, feature film. Um, so it's interesting uh, that somebody like Leandro is writing from the archive, writing history, thinking history from the point of view of the archive. That's my five cents. I was wanting to add to what uh, Sebastian and also for you uh, was saying before that I think the um, there's a lack of terminology that needs to, especially when when we search the archives and we find new or old things in the archives, we have to sometimes fight uh, the, what what's written in in books in terms of not not to rewrite history, but also to but mainly to update the terminology. Because, for example, in Argentine film, especially short film, there's a bunch of films that were considered experimental in, during those years in the 40s or in the 50s or in the 60s even. And maybe they, they, were, they were categorizing those films as experimental because they were this sometimes really weird and strange and sometimes, most of the time, really bad narrative films. So they were labeling as experimental just because they were doing something wrong in a way. And when, when we, it, it's very common to, to read history, history books, especially these like really classic, classical, like short film history books from Argentina. And you, you, you see a bunch of films categorized as experimental. And then when you see the actual films, they are not at all experimental, they are like, really in, in in some cases really bad narrative films really bad like or strange looking fiction films in terms of they are trying to to create a, a weird atmosphere but in, in in ways of a formal approach they are not at all experimental in the same way that other films are completely experimental so also you you it's it for me it's very important to 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 establish a link with with this uh, notion of, of returning to the archive and to rechecking things in order to to see if those things are I don't I don't want to say wrong or correct but if those things are uh, in the same tradition that many other for example you, you Leandros in in the in in his text begins like mentioning Horacio Coppola, which was a really 
well-known photographer that studied at Bauhaus and did this like really like uh, seminal uh, avant-garde films in the 30s and 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 those films are really in in a way in in, in the in the history books are really labeled as experimental because they are linked to surrealism for example but then in the 40s and 50s you don't have any strong avant-garde movement or 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 way of connecting these experimental things to any actual like international movement so uh, that's when you you see all these like really weird like attempts to establish in in which category or in which uh, place do I put this short film, which is really strange in a way, and and, and it's very interesting to, to return and, and and do, and and it's very disappointing as well to to finally get to see a film you have been wanting to see for a long time and you consider this. This should be a really like capital work in terms of the avant-garde or experimental, and then you see and it's a, like a, a really shitty film that it has nothing to do with the experimental agenda or the avant-garde agenda at all. Thank you very much, uh, Pablo and Sebastian. I think um, you said it nicely. I think also when it comes to film history, I think it's also I like what you said, rewrite history, and I wonder now. This is different you know, putting history aside, film history, uh, when when it comes to, you know, the writing of film history, this is what I find particularly interesting because, you know, the archive plays such a big role because, you know, what people, what access, you know, there is to films, it'll also determine what we can write about, you know, what people can see. I notice, you know, it's and it's astounding, you know, films like I mentioned Valerian Borovchik, and he's an important filmmaker who's been important, you know, since the time he was making films in Poland, uh, up until now, but it's only in the past few years since his work has been restored and it's been massive retrospectives over the world that it suddenly, you know, now started entering, you know, canons and so on. Um, so I, I think that's important to remember because, yes, and it, there is also a degree of, um, kind of, I don't know, selectivity or it can even be potentially ignorance or lack of access, but there, there is also, you know, sometimes even intentional ignorance of cinemas, you know, that are, um, you know, if it depends what criteria people use to write history. And I think often when it comes to the Anglophone context, especially, you know, the American or British context, there's often this kind of point of reference, you know, it's often comes from, it's often taken, like, let's say industry is a point of reference. Um, and then it's often, it's, it's really, to me, it's astounding how much you read about film history, at least in English. And the amount you see of films is predominantly, you know, like <laughs> American cinema, British cinema, but there are also, of course, you know, French, Italian cinemas and so on. Um, but the kind of space given to the Im immense, you know, um, history of world cinema is very little. And even in those very texts that call themselves the histories of world cinema. So that's why I, I think, I mean, in a very um, kind of um, uh, step by step way, it's important. That's why I find this kind of also film series useful is to get people talking um, and also hopefully, you know, that kind of go towards this and people make people realize, you know, kind of the, really their rich kind of heritage, the film heritage we have, um, both across borders and, you know, th that we should discover. So, I mean, one, I mean, this is also, I'll ask Landra one thing, and I really want to, uh, kind of to hear more from you, but just to give you an idea for ne our next weeks uh, on the film series, next week, we're going to look at post-war documentary in Scotland, um, and we're going to, it's called Memories of Scotland, so it's, and we're going to look at what the kind of archive here in the National Library of Scotland has, um, and there's a great little film called Dear Little Heart, Great Little Heart, um, and which we're going to be talking about. So that's another example. And then uh, the week after, which I'm particularly excited about, and I hope you can join us. Um, it's called, it's a week on, it's a Kara Jorge uh, 110th anniversary symposium. And this is the first Serbian feature film. It was made in 1911. Um, and it's really, you know, the first film made in the Balkans and one of the first, you know, first motion pictures ever. Um, but it was only discovered since 2004 and then restored. And that's why since then, you know, people can actually look at the film. Um, and that's, and there's really an interesting thing there, you know, how, how, how these early films work um, and how they're then, how important they are, you know, that film remained important um, in the context of Serbian and Yugoslav historiography all the way through, but once you're able to access it again, it helps. But I mean, that's another discussion for another time, because I think there's also a degree in which we can use lost films. You know, there are lost films, but you have a ton of material in the archives, so and I mean, you can tell me a lot more about this. Uh, so, and especially in the context of Argentina. So, but I wondered with Landro, I just wanted to ask you, Landro, what's the connection here with this movement and kind of what did these filmmakers go on to do 
And are they in any way connected to, you know, what comes after? Because, you know, what comes after, at least this moment you talked about Group Cine Liberación and this like third cinema manifesto and everything that comes in Argentina, you know, immensely well known. Um, and, you know, the work of Fernando Solana, Octavio Guitino and so on. Um, how does it connect? I mean, do, do these filmmakers, do you think they had an impact potentially, you know, in films like The Hour of the Furnaces or that tradition, that cultural uh, heritage that was there, the tradition that was there, film critique, um, does it tie into what came next is really the question. So what do you think? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, it's a bit complex, but I think that uh, I said before, many of the filmmakers of the short film generation will go on to be part of the, the Nueva Ola. Uh, the the sixty generation, and I think this sixty uh, generation uh, would produce a form of cinema which is completely different from what would would come out come after with the Grupo Cine Liberación and Grupo Cine La Base and, and all these movements. But I do think there's more of a connection between what a filmmaker like uh, Fernando Birri would do. Uh, and what comes after. I think, I'm not sure if there's a, a direct influence, but there are certain uh, aesthetic similarities and po there's possibly uh, maybe an influence in the text by Birri on, on the you know theory and practice of film by the movements that will come up later. But there's an interesting book, which is uh, uh, it's by Simon Feldman. He's one of the main, uh, he's one of the main filmmakers of the 60s moment of the Nueva Ola. And he would, uh, in his book, the Generación de 60, he would a bit explain how, I mean, by the end of the, of the period of this, uh, this movement, they will be a bit uh, disregarded or put aside by uh, the new filmmakers. So, is there a reason for this? I mean, maybe that's a very simple question, but is there? Uh, well, it said that um, I think that maybe because uh, where the the Nueva Ola filmmakers were very influenced by a, a form of, uh, uh, so to speak, outdoor cinema from from Europe. This was their main influence, whereas other movements, which were more akin to the uh, later 1960s movements, were hoping to seek a more <laughs> So, so to speak, a national way of filmmaker f filmmaking or a more Latin American way of filmmaking in a way to distinguish it from what it was being produced in Europe. Whereas the 60s generation were very much uh, openly inspired by this type of filmmaking. But what's the, okay, I'm going to stop asking questions, but just one final one. What's really the connection then between like, what would you say is the really national like cinema as opposed to the you know European influence one? Because I know, I'll just say my personal kind of impression. Maybe that's, you know, that's not definitive, obviously, but it, it's just something when I watched first, like La Hora de los Hornos, like when we watched Our the Furnaces in film school, that was to me like a wake up call, like for a little bit, you know, regardless of what it's politics, well, not regardless, <laughs> particularly interesting for its politics, but um, with everything in it, it really felt like an assault. Like the, all the Soviet stuff felt like uh, that I watched from the 20s felt like only like a warm up. This was like really, you know, like it felt like an assault after watching this one. was like, whoa, that's a film. You know, that's so. And that really was different than anything being made. In, for me, it was a bit different than anything being made in Europe at the time. So um, although there were, you know, political similarities, if you like, but the aesthetic expression was certainly different. So mm -hmm. if, is that really like, would you say, is that the European, like European kind of no. art? Argentine film, or is that the more national? Like, well, no, where yeah, is really the really difference? Film. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, when I refer to the more European influenced uh, 1960s filmmaking, uh, I refer to, you know, the films of the 60s generation. I mean, the 60s generation is a bit of a, 
It's a bit of a made up term, which loosely associates various filmmakers of the, of the time. And uh, it's interesting because in the Simon Feldman's book, uh, he also includes Pino Solanas as a generación de 60 filmmaker. Uh, even though, I mean, he's a bit different in what he he would do, especially after in the later 60s, no? So, so yeah, I mean, the I'm not saying that the generación de nuevo lista, so to speak, uh, were not trying to find the, also a, like a national way of uh, filmmaking, making a national production. But they were more influenced by auteur European cinema. Mm -hmm. But what's what's yeah. my question was more what's a kind of classic because you have obviously a distinction you know much more about this. What's a kind of classic for those you know who don't know or who would like to you know learn more watch these films you know with a new, with new eyes? Yeah. How uh, what's the difference like? Let's say if you could say one film, what's one film they would say is like, okay. if you can? I mean that's like a classic Argentine like national film if you like, and then one that's more influenced by nuances from European cinema. Uh, well, the films by uh, the there are six main directors of the uh, Nueva Ola, which are uh, Simon Feldman, uh, Cohn, uh, Rodolfo Kuhn, uh, Lautaro Murua, and two more which I'm forgetting at the moment. But they're yeah, Antin. <laughs> no, Miguel Antin. Antin, 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 of course. Antin, Manuel Antin. So yeah. they would be more of, of the type of filmmaker that's more influenced. By... I mean, it's a bit of a abstract uh, definition, no? Uh, maybe artificial <laughs> categorization, but uh, these are the filmmakers who in the 1960s would make up to, I mean, in the, especially in the early to mid 1960s we make film, which are more influenced by the European cinema. And the films that will come after that period by Pino Solana, Octavio Gettino, Raimundo Glazer are films which are seeking a more, uh, which are attempting to distinguish themselves from that sort of uh, filmmaking. But I will also add, for example, the likes of um, uh, Leonardo Fabio, no? I'll throw him into the mix, yes. I, 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 I just want to, I, I agree completely with, with Leandro. And I think maybe this, this distinction he was making, it's also better like explained uh, by throwing these uh, notions of first cinema, second cinema, and first cinema by Gettino and Solanas, right? The, the second, the, the first cinema would be the industry, like classical Hollywood or whatever. The second cinema would be the like the author cinema, like much much more personal, but still like a bourgeois, bourgeois kind of approach, a very intellectual, detached from the popular masses. And and I think that the first cinema was openly politic and openly. Uh, interested in engaging like popular audiences, right? And I think, uh, I, I was also thinking, I, 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 I didn't, I, I, I couldn't come with any name until you, you said Leonardo Fabio. And I, I think Leonardo Fabio is one of the greatest like definitions of, 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 a, of a position between the second cinema and the first cinema in a way, because it's, it's openly popular, openly, uh, entertaining as a filmmaker, but also very deep, deeply involved in 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 politics, and also in using cinema as a way to to transmit like ideology or something like that. So yeah, it's a very difficult diff difficult question. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I agree with uh, the the Fabio. It's a very important name uh, in this context. He also incorporates a popular tradition, like how do you say in English, radio teatro? Teleplay, I think, right? Uh, or, or radio, radio play? Or... Radio plays, radio no? play. a typical popular kind of mani manifestations of the soul of the people <laughs> that he puts in, in a context of a, a almost Bersonian kind of style. So. 
Please introduce yourself. Oh, sorry, we had we started an hour earlier. Maybe it's the time difference. Um, it's nice to have you with us. Thanks for your invitation. Uh, Thank you. Um, our, Leandro, I wanted to say these nuances with um, Argentine cinema. I didn't mean to, you know, single out and say this is one kind of film, this is the other. They all, you know, are part of, you know, the na national film heritage and um, world cinema heritage. But nonetheless, you know, it's interesting to see these, you know, as someone who knows, you know, the difference between some of these films, their influences, um, how they were made, why, and so on. The, the, I, I like that you brought all this out. Um, and I like that you mentioned Leonardo Fabio, so it's a great point. Um, like a film like El Dependiente, I, I love this. So I think... Is that, is that a kind of film, do you, do you think, like it works between these different points um, that Pablo was talking about? Like, I don't know if we want to use that, you know, as first, second, third cinema. <laughs> so I wonder, you know, we're just we're just going down the Pino Solana's route. But I think, uh, I wonder what you think. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not sure about that particular film. I, I haven't watched it, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> I suspect that most of his filmography would, would uh, enter in this uh, within this con concept. I, I mean, I, I always emphasize this, uh, but I think it's interesting uh, this uh, sort of uh, dark ages period, so to speak, in the 40s and 50s to, to mention this fact that there are films which were done in within a different context, not as a creative or, uh, you know, uh, as a form of training, uh, Show, uh, 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 this uh, selection of short films which were done within the context of, uh, for example, institutional filmmaking, which attempt to to experiment within these confines, you know. I, I, I think that's uh, interesting. That's an interesting topic which I, I think would need to further be explored. There's a very interesting uh, thesis uh, by uh, Javier Cosalter, which I, I I cite in the in the article, which also states that uh, to find these, you know, predecessors to the to the short films and modern short films, we can also look within the the film productions done by the cine clubs at the time. The cine clubs would would, would have a, a short film contests, and we don't know much about these films. And maybe in these films, which maybe most of them are presumably lost by this point, but maybe not. Maybe it's in these films that we can also find, uh, you know, other predecessors or, or maybe even uh, experimental films you know, done within that context. 